What's up everybody and welcome to today's build video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Unchained. It's been a while since I made an, an Unchained build, but we'll go over it for those that are not familiar. Uh, her passive ability, Blood Magic. 50% of her damage taken is transferred to her overcharge bar. So what that means is you get 50%, you know, half your damage kind of reduced. So if you take an overhead that would normally do 100 damage, you're taking 50 damage, but at the same time you take that hit, your overcharge bar fills up a certain amount, depending on the damage. Uh, her career skill, uh, Living Bomb, CN explodes, dealing damage surrounding enemies to surrounding enemies, and clearing her overcharge. So obviously if your overcharge bar fills up too much, you will explode, you will go down, so her career skill is kind of like a last minute save to reduce that if you're getting wailed on. Um, it also does a little bit of damage as well. Pretty nice little ability there. Slave to, I think that's pronounced Akshi? I'm not too sure, but no overcharge slowdown. And what that means is, say you're playing Barden, right? And you've got the Drake gun and you're using it a bunch and you fill it up past that last little uh, bar all the way to the right, past that black line, and you'll notice that your attack speed is a lot slower. Uh, where is it? Right here, yeah. Your attack speed's a lot slower. Um, that doesn't happen on Unchained because she's kind of designed to build up her overcharge and kind of live in that high overcharge zone. She's also got un unstable strength, increased melee power on high overcharge by up to 60%. So as your overcharge bar fills up, you'll get, I think it's five stacks, five being the highest, obviously, and that just lets you do more melee damage, which is pretty cool. As far as the talents go, today I'm going to be using, or uh, for this build, I'm going to be using the Fire Sword. So I like Soul Quench. Staggering enemies gives you temporary health. Um, the Fire Sword is very good for staggering enemies. It's got great survivability aspects to it. So you're going to make a bunch of temp health with this. Um, charge attacks, very easy to kind of knock hordes back and and just deal with them. That's, that's pretty nice. She's also got Reckless Rampage, which is dam damaging multiple enemies in one swing. Give you temp health. This would be good for like a dagger or a fucking, even the bill hook. I guess it'd be pretty decent with the bill hook. Burn Bloom is just heal share. I never recommend heal share because you don't make any temp health, which, which usually leads to a quicker death for you so staggering very good down here chain reaction this one i think kind of gets a bad rap i don't know if they've like changed this one since i've last looked at it but from what i can tell it almost causes like an insta death um every so often you know it's a small chance i don't know the exact uh percentage on it but you know with the fire sword you can ignite a bunch of enemies at once so you'll do that and then maybe one or two of them will explode kind of do you know they'll die right away and it does a little it doesn't do any damage but it does a little like knockback a little stagger effect to uh, enemies that are close by so it's actually a decent little um, horde survivability thing I don't know, it's kind of weird but it's fun like it everything explodes and it's just a, it's a nice little way to kind of deal with a horde in a, in a different way. Uh, Searing Grasp is another one. This one's okay. Um, I don't think it's as good as Chain Reaction with the Fire Sword. It's just pushing in a, um, an enemy, ignites them, which will do like a, a couple ticks of damage. Nothing crazy. This would, The only reason really to use this would be to pair it with Enfeebling Flames down there, which I will get into in a second. She's also got Frenzied Flame, which has increased attack speed by 15% when at, or by, when at or above high overcharge. Now normally this would be the uh, the talent to use, but I, because we're using the Fire Sword, attack speed isn't really super important. So I go with Chain Reaction to be able to get a little lucky and get those insta-deaths. And down here, I like Bulwark because it's the Fire Sword, a very stagger-heavy weapon, and enemies that you stagger are going to be taking 10% more damage from melee attacks for two seconds. So that means that your team will be able to do a little bit more damage to enemies that you stagger. And that's kind of what we're going for here. This is this is kind of a support class build. This isn't you're not going to be doing crap tons of damage with this build. 
you're not going to be leading the charge in any way, but you're going to be a, a key component in a successful team. And this is the first step of that. Um, if you don't, if you're not super crazy about bulwark and you're like, I want to do a little more damage with my flames and have a little more cleave, whatever, enhanced power would be all right for that. This is not my first choice, but this will work. Um, mainstay is not really a great idea with the fire sword because it's really just like a one two hit kind of weapon and what mainstay really shines in is like a three hit sequence for extra damage so bulwark would be my number one hands power number two definitely and down here dissipate i really like this one because what it does is when you're at high overcharge and you you block it'll reduce your block cost in half but as you're blocking attacks, your overcharge will go down a little bit. So you can kind of, if you get your overcharge real high, you can kind of block a little bit, take it down a little bit, maybe spam your staff or something like that, get it back up, melee, block, you know. You can kind of um, mess around with it and kind of control it that way. Uh, she's also got Conduit, which is increases rate of venting overcharge by 30% and reduces damage taken from venting by 50%. I think this is dumb, kind of useless. That just means like... When you're cooling down, when you're at least on PC, when you're holding R to cool down, you just take less damage and it does it faster. It's to me like I don't that this doesn't matter to me. You already take like two, three, four damage from that anyway. It's not that much. Uh, she's also got numb to pain, reduces damage taken by five percent for fifteen seconds after taking damage from venting overcharge. Stacks up to three times. So a little 15% damage reduction thing. This is, if you're gonna be, you know, venting quite often, this will be all right, but I think Dissipate is a much better talent than either of these two, and that'd be the one to use. Now, a big part of the support class build is Enfeebling Flames here. Burning enemies deal 30% less damage. So what this means with the Fire Sword, on your charge tax, you're gonna be igniting everything. Entire uh, lines on, on the front of a horde, on the side of a horde, wherever you are, you know? So, all those guys that are on fire are gonna be dealing 30% less damage, which is gonna really help your team out because they're gonna take a lot less damage, they're gonna be taking 30% less damage from this, and they're gonna be able to do 10% more da extra damage uh, from this. So it's definitely a very helpful way to, to play. If you're the kind of person that is okay with not being top damage and not kind of swinging your big old palooza all over the place, waving your dick around, you know, like you're hot shit. This is a decent way to play. She also has burning dregs, dropping below 50% in health, vents all over charge, can only trigger every 60 seconds. And this is a great talent if you're, you know, maybe not super experienced with Sienna and you're gonna get hit quite often. This is all right. I don't think it really fits with this kind of a build, but this is a pretty good talent. Natural talent reduces overcharge generated by 10%. So just, you know, something to kind of keep your overcharge bar from uh, flying out of control, basically. Not a terrible talent, but like I said, doesn't really fit with the support class thing that we're going for in this. Then for the ultimate, Bomb Balm. Living Bomb restores 30 temporary health to allies. So in ultimate support fashion, you will be letting your teammates do 10% more damage to enemies you stagger. You will be protecting your teammates. They will be taking 30% less damage. And you're going to give them temp health from your ultimate. That sounds like a lot of support to me. Um, she's also got Fuel for the Fire. Uh, each enemy hit by Living Bomb gives you a little uh, power stack for 10 seconds. Stacks up to five times, it's 25% power. Um, this one's not that great, I don't think. I actually don't think I've ever seen anybody ever use this, but I mean, it might work all right with a certain weapon, but with the fire sword, doesn't really serve a purpose. Flame wave increases the radius of living bomb explosion by 50%, so just a bigger bomb, more fire. Uh, this one's all right, but I mean, you gotta keep in mind your ultimate does do a little bit of friendly fire. Um, so you will be like taking away Iron Breaker's Gromril armor. You will be like doing a little bit of damage to your team. I think if you're gonna do that, Bomb Bomb is a smart play because you at least help your team in some way. 
Um, so those are the talents for the gear. As I mentioned, Fire Sword. Um, I like uh, Attack Speed, Power vs. Chaos, Swift Sling. You can definitely go for Power vs. Skaven if that's what you feel more comfortable for, more comfortable with. Nothing wrong with that at all. For the staff, I like the Fireball Staff. Because even if you're not going to melee, you're still going to want to set things on fire. And Chain Reaction does work with the Fireball Staff. Power vs. Chaos, Crit Chance. I go for Thermal Equalizer. That just lets me spam it more. You can definitely go for Hunter with that crit chance there. That'll also let your team do 25% more damage to enemies, including monsters. The necklace, I go for health, block cost reduction, and bark skin. Health, I think, is a must on everybody. Block cost reduction, just in case I need to fucking deal with a little uh, overhead attack and I can't get out of the way. Bark skin for 40% reduced damage when you take... Uh, Two hits back to back within two seconds. Uh, the charm here gets power vs chaos, attack speed, and decanter. Uh, she's got a really long cooldown on her ult. I think it's like two minutes or two minutes and thirty seconds or something. So decanter lets you get most of that back pretty quickly. Um, concoction doesn't really serve a purpose on her because it's too short and only takes off like a minute. Um, but proxy would be something that uh, would actually be pretty good on Unchained. And like I said, the um, these uh, properties are kind of interchangeable on her. You can swap out Chaos for Armor, and you can swap out Chaos for Skaven. Uh, you don't necessarily need that attack speed if you feel like you're just that comfortable with the Fire Sword. You can put a number of different things on here. For the Trinket, Curse Resistance, Crit Chance, and Shrapnel. I pretty much never change this. Curse Resistance is good for Grimms. Uh, keeps your health high when you have two Grimms. Crit Chance, a little bit of extra damage. Helps you proc your Swift Sling. Helps you proc your uh, your Hunter if you have that. And then Shrapnel for a Grenade. Throw it at a monster, they take 20% more damage. I think that can be combined with uh, Hunter as well. So definitely a solid uh, trait to use there. So there you guys have it, the uh, Unchained Support Class builds. Let me know what you guys think.